You got to separate people from governments. I tell people this all the time. You should uh, wink twice if if somebody's with you next to you. <laughs> now I'm paranoid. You know, I Sanctions is expanded to culture, unfortunately. I feel more free here. I feel like I can speak my mind. American healthcare versus Russian, do you have a view on that? Where I felt like I was dying. The ambulance came and picked me up and took me to the hospital. I, I think the people here are more honest and straight with you. Is it hard for a foreigner to get a job? My wife and I have spoken at Ghost Duma, which is Russian parliament. Cool things down politically on the planet and to stop the Cold War. We have a YouTube channel, it's called Expat American. You saw all of them like, I subscribe to your channel. <laughs> exactly. Russia is wondering if they should make changes to their immigration laws. In Russia today we got a very interesting uh, person uh, being interviewed live, well, sort of live. This is expat American straight from Russia. Hello, Joseph. Or hey, man, how you doing? So straight from Russia, Moscow specifically, but originally America, hence or the name. And that's uh, very interesting to talk to. You're my first American person that I've talked to. Because oh, really? I, uh, not in life, but in, in this uh, Russia context. Well, you might be my first Finnish man I've talked to in life. And probably first Finnish with a strong Russian background, meaning that uh, as soon as I speak something that uh, majority is not uh, um, is, is disagreeing with, then all of a sudden I'm not finished then. <laughs> <In their interest. laughs> well, I'll find out all about that on my channel when I interview you. Yes, we're gonna do a couple of videos. We're gonna do a, a video with me talking to you about living in Russia and everything about you and uh, vice versa and maybe you guys are gonna find out something new on about me as well or and Joseph from that video on an expat American. And since you're here don't uh, wait for it just click on the follow and subscribe to expat american link in the description and also if you're new to this channel eager in russia subscribe also to my channel uh, excellent content bringing the real life in russia because it seems uh well the news portrays russia in only one way but i think the interesting thing is just the just opening the window and just walking on the streets and talking to the people and everything you see just by being there so especially moscow is very interesting Got yes that. absolutely this is what the world needs no joke uh russia needs more fair representation you know that doesn't mean that russia is perfect that doesn't mean russia doesn't do things wrong sometimes but there's a, a wealth of information out there that's saying russia's this russia's that in a negative way and I think it's on both of our hearts to show more aspects of Russia. Yeah, I think the uh, the main thing is that uh, just to show the reality, not not getting into politics, but just about talking about the cultural stuff. Because I don't think that no matter what happens, no matter with uh, which country, you don't have to mix all things together. And, and think about and talk about, for example, Russia only from one perspective, because it's a huge country with a long history, with influences all around the world, with hundreds of that, uh, tens and hundreds of thousands of expats all around. They are probably influenced in your country right now, uh, just like I am uh, with the Russian roots in Finland, influencing the way, well, I just live my life and influence my surrounding like everybody else does. So. Russian yes, absolutely. Russian You've got to separate people from governments. I tell people this all the time because people will get very excited and they'll have hateful thoughts towards entire countries. And I tell them, you've got to separate these things out. Otherwise, your thoughts uh, are leading you to genocide if you carry them all the way through. You know, there's yeah. a difference between a land and a people and a culture and its government. And that doesn't mean I'm saying that a government is necessarily terrible, but you've got to be able to separate the two things. Exactly. So we got, uh, there's a lot of things to be discussed clearly, <laughs> but uh, first of all, who are you? Let, let us know and let me know as well. What's your background? How, how Joseph or can I refer to you as Joseph or expat American? What's your 
Uh, uh, only expat American all the time. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Joe is fine. Or Joseph, if you want. Or Michael, like I wrote your name first. <laughs> all right, right, right. He said, hey, Michael. Like, who's that? <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, well, yeah. I how, mean, how? I'm just, uh, as far as me, I I'm a normal guy. Um, I'm an American who grew up in Florida and went to film school at New York University. And then after that, I moved to Hollywood, California, worked in the movie business, um, had five kids, opened up um, a small business in Florida, ran that for a while. And then about eight days before the special military operation, decided to move to Russia with my wife and five kids. And in my late 40s, I've now started a YouTube channel going around showing the world Russia's normal place. So just typical average person living on planet Earth life. What was, by the way, Florida like? Because, you know, American pop culture rules the world for decades now. And uh, me personally, I watch tons of like real similar content like mine from Russia, but about America. Like I watched mm -hmm. this dude about Las Vegas life. I uh, watched New York, uh, uh, German in Venice is very nice uh, YouTube channel as well. It's, it's a German living decades in Los Angeles and, uh, you know, experiencing that part of world the world without <laughs> without ever even like uh, visiting myself and seeing that in real life but so what about your life shortly of course what was it like living in like florida usa not well, don't, don't don't tell uh don't compare yet we will get into that later <laughs> <laughs> okay so florida i think like any state is is gonna look pretty normal like you might see in a family drama coming out of Hollywood. Um, you know, Florida has its entertainment industry just like California. So it's good at creating entertainment. Um, and there are pockets of that that you can go visit like certain streets that are really cool. Um, but for the most part, all of Florida is pretty average except that I would say its most defining characteristic is how hot it is. I know that sounds like a stereotype, but it is true. Um, you know, spring and fall is hot. Um, winter is kind of warm. It's cold for a little bit here and there, but it's spotty. And summer is practically unbearable. I mean, you take a shower, you get clean, and then you're sweaty almost instantly. And from what I understand, Florida was pretty much undeveloped until air conditioning was invented. All right. Uh, I'll, I'll be following, of course. You, are you political, like, in, in America at all? Like, are you following DeSantis' uh, journey to possible candidacy? And that's um, I'm not following it as much as I used to. Since I moved here, I don't keep up with it as much. But I am familiar, and, you know, I... I I have five kids, so I'm big in traditional, into traditional family values. That's important for me. Mm -hmm. So I would be, living in America, I would be looking for candidates that are gonna be encouraging, you know, traditional family values. So I had no- They know more, I got you. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Trump is Floridian nowadays, right? Yeah, yeah, he's, Mar -a -Lago, he's, got, Mar -a -Lago. he's got a place down there. So, yeah. and, and Trump's an interesting character because, uh, you know, I, I don't know. I, don't, I guess yeah. I shouldn't say anything about Trump because he's so divisive. Um, yeah. But I have that's, mixed uh, feelings That's the reason I got into say. American politics, by the way. I watched all the whole run of Trump through the media's eyes, all his speeches and all the... Uh, I watched yeah. it all. Uh, <laughs> it's a very, very interesting story. That is yeah. for sure. You know, and it's interesting how an outsider just kind of did things his own way. But uh, moving moving from this uh, hot Florida, what what made you move to uh, Russia? And how was that decision making like? Because it's a, yeah, living in America, moving to Russia, with all the stereotypes, sure, you probably weren't into stereotypes, but still like in America, there's so huge, the stereotypes about living in Russia and it's quite absurd idea for 99% probably. So right. how was that like? Yeah, I mean, Hollywood convinced me and most Americans that Russia is a cold, dark, scary place full of bad guys. Um, that it's definitely, 
you know, not a good place and you, you wouldn't want to find yourself there. Um, I never thought I would, I would come visit here, let alone live here. I never would have come here, um, except I fell in love with a Russian woman. And so, you know, a man's desire, a man's love can trump other things. And because of that, I decided to take the chance and come out here to see her. We had met in America and got along really well. So I decided to take the chance and go behind what used to be the Iron Curtain and see her. And I was scared the whole time. But while I was scared, I was looking around and what I had been taught in my head was not matching what my eyes saw. And I was yeah. amazed that Russia was not what people said that it was my entire life. Yeah, and uh, well, I have Russian background, but I never properly visited Russia except just a couple of times throughout the 90s all the way to the first time I properly visited St. Petersburg. And me as a people, person with a Russian strong roots, like 80% or something and partially Finnish, but living all my life basically in Finland, uh, I was also, I had similar, of sure, you, had, you, you were moving to Russia, that's a big difference, but still going to Russia, I had all the same feelings like, uh, and then little by little, the, uh, the contrast, like, uh, like the media portrayal v or Hollywood portrayal versus, and the media, yeah, media portrayal versus the reality somehow start to shift that I don't, I started to understand that it's not reality. For example, I, I was scared to go to uh, use metros for some reason because it's, I don't know why, but somehow it felt like a dark, scary place. So I actually walked four kilometers to my uh, train station where I went back to Finland because I visited off as much as often as I could St. Petersburg because I fell in love with it. But I walked like four kilometers because I was scared. <laughs> but after that, I fell in love with it and I filmed every metro station in St. Petersburg, among many other things. But yeah, yeah so I well, their metro is quite deep and it goes underwater. So yeah. If you were going to be paranoid about any metro, it'd probably be the St. Petersburg metro, right? But it has this Russian vibe that I was scared of. Not not metros in general. No. I'm not afraid no. of underground. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, you you went you moved there. Did you need some kind of? How was it as a husband? You were married, right? Well, my first that trip point. was just to see someone that I was in love with. On that trip, I asked her to be my girlfriend. Wow, yeah. and and then the next trip, she came to see me, and we decided after being around each other in America for two months, we would get engaged, we would get married, and we went and asked American immigration, what should we do before she flies back to Russia? They said, well, you better marry her right now because oh. we were in our late 30s, and they said if she goes back to Russia to apply for a marriage visa, that could take a year or two. And I still wanted to have kids with her. Yeah. So she skipped her flight and two months later we got married and she stayed in America. We then visited Russia, I think three times, like over the, like every two years for a month. Mm -hmm. And so I got to live here sort of before I moved here. Yeah, while that, she that helped a lot probably. Business. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff probably in, in between that would be interesting. I think this is um, such a, complicated topic because you know there's a huge difference in cultures etc can you say something more about what was the biggest uh, difference in your early trips to russia which sort of uh shocked you that weren't uh, ac not according with the hollywood narrative or media narrative was there well just seeing how normal life is you know these are people just like Americans. They are living their lives. They are going to work. They are living in houses or flats. They are taking cars to work or the metro. They have traffic lights. They have trash cans. They have recycle bins. Yeah. Everything is pretty much the same. I mean, you know it's a different country because they're speaking a different language. But, you know, for people that haven't spent time in both countries, I'm telling you, they are so much the same, which is why it's it's just completely ridiculous that they're that we're on our second Cold War now, in my opinion. Yeah. And uh, 
uh, what about your inner circle? How did your friends and family react to this uh, decision to move? Well, that's a bit of a sad story because the mainstream media narrative is so strong that I think people will not believe their friend over the news. Yeah. Uh, because I, you know, I moved here and then eight days later, the special military operations started. And of course, immediately friends are sending messages and calls. Are you okay? Is everything okay? Yeah. And I said, yeah, everything's okay. You know, I was, of course I was concerned, but, but life was going on. Everything was normal. Um, and as the months went by, I got fewer and fewer messages and people reaching out to me. Now I still have friends and people who reach out to me, but they are rare. And if you're listening to this, you know who you are. Thanks, man. Um, <laughs> but a lot of people, most people, you know, they would send an email and, and they tell me things they heard in the news and they'd ask me if I'm okay. And then I would tell them how great it is and how everything is fine. And then I, I don't get a response back. They just disappear. Um, um, so because they expect been, you to answer annoying. something else. And uh, do you think yeah. they might think that you're like, uh, I don't know, not blackmailed, but it, it would be, it wouldn't be surprising if those people would think so, you know, not blackmailed, but like uh, maybe uh, brainwashed, you know? Yes, I was going to say, I think that they, some of them probably think that I'm brainwashed. Like, oh man, poor Joe, we lost him. He's a crazy person now. That's what yeah. I imagine, but I don't want to speculate. Just like they're speculating about me right now. Yeah. Right now. So. Uh, you should uh, wink twice if if somebody's with you next to. You. <laughs> now I'm paranoid that I'll accidentally yeah. wink. And but I know exactly what you mean uh, because uh, in my videos I show just uh, well, I, uh, it's narration. I do it with narration and uh, with my personality on my videos, but I, eventually, eventually, essentially, I show just, you know, the reality and try to make it imp imp uh, interesting. And when I show like shops that are, or which are not that much influenced by sanctions, for example, whether he, she likes it or not, but um, it, the shops are full and maybe doing even better, I don't know, than ever. And, uh, and and American products which are left are actually not even not necessarily left the market. They just rebranded themselves or created a new company, which technically is not the American company, etc. You know, like I think Reebok or like uh, Reebok, I think changed the name to some other thing, like Coca Cola, basically some other company. You know that type of stuff. And when they see that, and uh, they usually also don't believe it and try to maybe think that I'm just propagandist or that's just the uh, or just straight out lying or I don't know I, I don't know how come because you and me know that it's just people just should see it for themselves and they would believe it but because they don't and probably won't see it for themselves it's hard to believe the video yeah this is why we need channels like yours and channels like mine and more of them so that the information gets out because right now you have this massive media industrial complex that's controlling the narrative around the world. Mm -hmm. And so we, but we now have technology so that anyone can get out their phone and they can do a story and they can do a show and they yeah. can, you know, let the world know, like in your videos, I see you just wander around the streets and you talk about the history and, the, and show the interesting things. And this yeah. is something that can't be ignored if someone watches your videos. And I try and do the same thing with, with my videos where I'm creating kind of short 20 minute comedy dramas with my family where we're just living normal life in Russia. And I try to always have a subject and always have a place and make the videos specific about something unique in Russia. You know, I don't want to bore the audience and, um, you know, I want people to know as quickly as possible in the West, this is a normal place. But uh, that would be actually even better content for YouTube algor algorithms if you falsify and actually show what most of the people would want to see. That would be actually an easy route. <laughs> this is true. And that, that's, uh, you know, I, 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 can, I can play that game a little bit if it will help people know the truth, meaning... I can title my videos in a negative way. 
I can have my videos start out seemingly negative and then the video story will turn and, and people will realize, oh, this is not a bad place. You know, and I, I did that with a video about Maslenitsa, which is mm -hmm. for a Westerner, kind of a scary sounding, pagan sounding holiday. And I, I did a video called Is yeah. Russia Pagan? And it starts out kind of disturbing in, in the way it sounds. and But then by the end, you see this is completely an innocent thing. Yeah. And uh, by the way, speaking about cultures, because Maslenitsas were celebrated all across like some Eastern Europe countries and etc. And like, but now it's like the culture ban is like uh, the sanction, sanctions is expanded to culture, unfortunately, which has nothing to do with and, uh, and even language, which is like crazy utopian idea. In short, well, in, in so many words that you'll choose to uh, speak, uh, how life is different in Russia comparing to America? Now, like in, in a broad way, like now that you've been living there for nine months, right? And uh, uh, well, sure, I started the, the, the you mentioned nine been, months ago, but I've yeah. been here for about a year and a half now. All right, all right. So, what would you say are the biggest differences and might be pros and cons, top five or top three from each? Uh, comparison. Well, I mean, I feel more free here. I feel like I can speak my mind. Um, and I don't mean necessarily from a big government standpoint, just in general, um, yeah. it, it, on the street with people. You know, if I were to say, oh, I, I like Trump or I like cats, I'm not saying I like Trump <laughs> or cats or that I don't, um, that, you know, people are going to be okay with it, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Whereas, you know, even if I'm in, in church in Florida, if I have the wrong political opinion, people are going to think bad thoughts about me. Um, yeah. So, you know, from that regard, I think the culture is healthier. The people can be themselves and say what they want to say, and it's not the end of the world. Um, the, the other thing I think I may have mentioned before, traditional family values is very strong here. You know, they, they encourage that. Um, whereas I think right now, America, sadly, is encouraging the opposite. Uh, they're encouraging values that are contrary to traditional family values, uh, which, which is a big problem. And I'm not yeah. hating America. I'm not down on America. I feel bad for America. I love America. It's my country, but I do think it's sick right now. And, and I, I hope and pray that America gets better. Um, you know, other things are superficial, they don't matter as much. The food here, I like better. As an older person, I'm going to be 49 soon. The food is um, both healthy and tasty enough. You know, yes, it could be tastier, but it would probably be worse for you and vice versa. Um, and I think the architecture is great. Again, I'm talking about more superficial things. You know, you got a yeah. lot of older buildings to see, which is really nice and cool. I am impressed being in Moscow, how well the city functions with the metro system and the buses and the traffic, and all the buildings and the sidewalks and the parks and the outdoor gyms. It's, it's amazing. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's close to idyllic. What about cons or like things that are better in America? They're not necessarily cons, which are different. I can do any, any anything you like. Yeah, I, <laughs> I guess I have to be the more inter uh, take the I mean, journalistic the, stance. Uh, let's say. I mean, on. the weather is better in America. The weather. The weather is better in America. Yeah, absolutely. But that's so. geographically wrong. You know what? Well, why? because I mean, right, I know, yeah, I you know talking about Moscow or Russia now. I know what you're saying. You know, I'm in Moscow and I was in Florida. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, and, and you can find snow in America, and you can find places without snow in Russia. But if you look at a globe, Russia is mostly higher, and yeah. the U.S. is, is lower. So um, I, I think that you know weather is going to be better in general. Um, yeah. But uh, what about in life? You know, some is there in some things better? Maybe. Uh, well, I mean, what do you miss? Yeah. If I want to, if I want to nitpick, um, I, I've said before, um, you know, there are buildings, older buildings in Moscow that have no elevators. 
Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> um, I will say that the lobbies, uh, the podest for buildings in Russia, um, they don't look good, and you wouldn't mm -hmm. see that in America. Um, and, and this is just me being mean and silly. It's superficial. It doesn't matter. Um, but if you've never been to America, we don't have those foyer podes lobbies like you guys have. They're, they're just they're usually dark and they're you know mm -hmm. they're just it, it's it's very um, like from a, a sci-fi dystopian uh, future type thing. Does that make sense, or have I have I are you going to hang up the interview? Now? No, no, it's great. But uh, <laughs> what about? Uh, I'm not just uh, for the video interested, interesting personally, especially in America, because I know that in Europe, in many places, the social system might be better. We're going a little bit deeper. But what American healthcare versus Russian? Do you have a view on that? Because in America, it's privatized, right? And you have to have insurances. And if you don't, you're on your own. And in Russia, technically, it has a free, because I don't live in Russia myself even though I right. wouldn't mind at all. Right. But um, this is an issue that is up for debate in my mind right now. Um, I, so I was raised in America, and so what I was taught is uh, American healthcare is privatized, but if you're a poor person and you're really in trouble, you can go to an emergency room. They have to serve you. And, you know, yes, you're paying for health insurance in America, but you get to choose how much health insurance you want to pay for. And on top of that, yeah, yeah. it might be free in other countries, but America is where all the new medicine is developed is what is what I what I would hear. What yeah, I was yeah, taught. Yeah. Now I'm here, I'm in Russia and it's it appears to all be free, you know, especially once you get your residency, which I have. Yeah. And I already had. Uh, a health issue one evening where I felt like I was dying and the ambulance came and picked me up and took me to the hospital. I actually have, did a show on it. It's one of my more popular episodes. I forget what it's called. But it's, you it's check it out on Next Bad American. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I think it's number six of my most watched videos. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, it was you just did it for the show then. You took a wrong pill just to get the get on the ambulance. That's right, man. It did so well. I was like, how can I almost die again? For another what happened? Episode? So they <laughs> took you in? Yeah, and, and you know, it's funny, which I realized in filming the episode, is I had never been in an ambulance before. Um, because in America, you they have them, and you can call for one, and you can take one. On well, my phone, people are texting me. Sorry. Mm -hmm. You can take one, but you're going to get a bill for like $5,000 in a few months, you know, for yeah. instance, I don't know exactly. So, you know, most people are not going to take an ambulance no matter what. You're going to get your friend to drive you to the hospital or something like that. I was having abdominal pain and my wife was like, we're calling the ambulance. And I was like, okay. And, you know, then when I got better and after spending the night in the hospital, I signed a couple of papers and I walked out the door and that was it. I didn't pay anything. You know, um, so, you know, and, and the staff, I think were comparable. You had people that were on the friendly side and people that were just kind of like serious and doing their job and not very friendly, but they weren't mean. And you would get that in a hospital in, in America as well. Yeah. All right. Interesting. So I need to actually check out that video. Is it a long video or a short video like YouTube shorts? Oh no, it's a long video. Oh, good. I like that. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it's like it's like twenty minutes long or fifteen minutes long, something like that. But it's not a short. So, and what would you say is the, is best in Russia from your perspective? And like, what are the best things? Show sure, you actually, man. Maybe uh, are is there? If I ask this, is there any differences in your answer compared to the previous question about pros and cons, the values, etc., or is there something else? Well, if I could add something in thinking about what's good or best about Russia, um, and you can tell me if it matches your culture, um, I think the people here are more honest and straight with you. Yeah. Um, and that is nice. That's very nice to get the truth from someone. You know what? I was um, supposed to add this when you were talking about people in general. I wanted to say, but I decided I'll let you speak because I wanted to kind of put my five cents to it, that people are actually 
when you say you have the freedom, that's what I wanted to say, that actually people say things. But I would add that they are really polite. I mean, you have to be polite uh, to the person. Well, you, uh, you know, in America, I think they are nicer, but they're not that open. Yeah. You know? And so I think that in Russia, they can, or Moscow at least, they can be a bit on the rude side compared to what you're used to if you're an American. But they're going to be honest with you. And yeah. so I, I just, what I think right now is that these are two good things, honesty and politeness. And I think that Americans are trained, you better be polite, period. Yeah. And if you can do the other, that's fine too. But polite, that's number one. I think Russians are trained, and I don't mean like literally with classes, but yeah. you know, through the culture, that you're going to be honest. In gulags, honest. they would say. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it's just a question of cultural priorities. I think both things are good, but I, th I think that's what's going to give you the difference between both countries. Yeah, and there's a, I made a video with this um, other YouTuber about uh, stereotypes, and uh, we spoke about the American smile versus the Russian being considered rude, considered rude for those who don't know them. And that's the difference was that uh, in Russia, if you smile for no reason, you probably are lying, something like that, that type of a thing. But when, but the other thing is when you get to, if you have especially even a little bit common language, uh, it helps a lot and people will open up. But otherwise, if you don't, especially in Moscow, because I think Mos Moscovites are more rude than other Russians. That's my understanding. But if you don't know the other person, the the face is very neutral. It might be even seem to be rude or like angry or like uh, unsatisfied. But once you get to talking, people are like really, really honest and uh, hard, you know, open hearts. Right. Yeah. Right. So what's your daily life now in Russia in just the one in one take so i i do my youtube channel and i have five kids so i'm not reporting to work anywhere three of my kids are adults already um the other two you know i'm taking to school and child care and so you know i have free time that i completely fill with filming youtube videos and editing them like crazy which takes a lot of time because i'm doing on average two shows a week, mm -hmm. like two 20 minute little movies, like I said. And, um, you know, I'm, I don't have a car. I can take the Metro, you know, I'll buy a car if I have to, but I don't have to right now. You know, yeah. I, li I live in a flat. It's nice. Um, uh, I like this, this neighborhood in Moscow. I can take the Metro to the center in 30 minutes. You know, I can walk eight minutes to a Sean, which is Russia's version of Walmart, French Walmart. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I mean, life is, is a bit simpler. It's nice not having a car. It's kind of like New York style living, I would say. Have you been exploring also then your uh, neighboring areas outside Moscow? Oh yeah. Other, I mean, other I, cities and uh, or towns? Oh yeah, definitely. Um, on the show, we went to Yaroslavl a couple of times. Yeah. Um, we went oh, that. Uh, also on the show down south and we went to Kaluga and then um, Voronish. Um, That's my route, by the way. My What's roots, that? My roots are from Voronish. Oh, nice. Very, cool. Varon Very cool. Yeah, partially yeah. Voronishian. I have my, it it my reminded town. me of my town of Tallahassee, but um, yeah. I, I understand it's, it's probably four times the size of Tallahassee. Yeah. Um, and I haven't posted it yet, but we went to St. Petersburg and did a couple of videos there. So yeah. that's up next for me to edit and post. So. I've uh, substantially filmed St. Petersburg. Uh, it's like it conquered my heart and soul and mind. Yeah, I'll have to meet up with you next time I'm there. Well, I, and I'm arriving to Moscow, so maybe that first. Very good. We yeah. will do that. We will see in person each other and we'll, we'll do an in-person episode. How's uh, how's life? What about if uh, you would search for work? Do you have anything? How hard is it for uh, um, not, in, not not well maybe even entrepreneur? But uh, is it hard for a foreigner to get a job? And I, I assume you don't speak that well Russian. No, I don't speak, speak that well. If you I'm the worst speak. in my family. Everyone speaks Russian but me. So. So, but there are two languages. 
be bilingual, so that's awesome. That your your kids, for yeah, example. I'm working on it. I'm taking classes. Yeah, and if, but if you like, didn't speak Russian, is it what's the situation on that? Um, it is very easy to be employed if you want to be an English tutor or teacher, um, and so making money to live would not be a problem at all if you were to move to Russia. Now, if you want to do other things, you know, that's just going to depend on the industry and on your skill yeah. level and the career that you're in, whether or not you have the money to open your own business or not. So, but I think, many uh, people that speak yeah. English that are not from here, they either teach English or they work in media. Yeah, the, I think that uh, right now it's even though like um, economically and uh, co tourism and all most of the projects are stopped uh, right now but I think that means that actually because lesser people for example in Finland are studying before that it was like one percent that studied Russian and uh, it's not popular language I wonder why but um, uh, I think Russian language in in Europe and vice versa English in uh, in Russia is getting this is even more important because of this because lesser people for example here uh, studies Russian or don't believe in the bright future is studying language so that means there's lesser people who are gonna be valued more that's my opinion yeah, yeah. I mean I wish that I had learned other languages when I was young I mean I, I hope to, to know Russian well enough soon but, you know, when you're in America, I mean, people do what they have to do. And those who live in America, you're on the other side of the world. Yeah. You, know, you don't really have to learn another language, so you don't think about it. Whereas if you're in Western or Eastern Europe, let's say, you, it's best that you know a few languages because your country is the size of a state and you got lots of other languages around you. Um, yeah. That's my theory anyway. And one thing about Russians or countries that don't, that are not strong with English, language uh understanding the local language like russian in russia especially if you go further from these big cities uh it's like very vital if you want to get into deeper inside the community or like understand or just have a better experience because if there's a strong language barrier a lot of things cannot be explained even though in russia you can you can enjoy russia without speaking a word of uh, russian because uh, Russian people, I don't know, there's a thing that uh, people just, you know, somehow understand you. They speak to you directly Russian, even though you say you don't speak Russian. Or restaurants or in life on the streets. And you will get something or you will be pointed out in a, some direction for something. And usually that's uh, just a good thing. Or at least it will give you a new adventure as a minimum. Or you will actually get the thing that you were asking for and nobody actually just spoke your language. But somehow people just get along. That's what interesting about Russian people in general all right, all right. but uh, one more question I think even though yeah. we could we could talk about daily life much more deeper but I think uh, let's move along so people rather leave them hungry than uh, what's the word exactly. when you eat too much? what's the leave word for when you eat too much? more <laughs> yeah uh, what's your plans for the future in as a uh, personally and um, and for the, for the YouTube, if, if, if you can reveal. Yeah, well, I mean, I'll, I'll have my St. Petersburg mini series coming out soon. Um, I'm doing more collaborations with other YouTubers because I want to see what other people are doing and I want the audience to see more things happening. Um, my wife and I have spoken at Ghost Duma, which is Russian parliament. We have spoken at a few conferences one was the St. Petersburg Economic Forum, which is why we have videos from there that I'll post. And our goal is to do whatever we can to cool things down politically on the planet and to stop the Cold War because our kids live on this planet. And I want things to go well for my kids and everyone else's kids. So, you know, whether that be making exciting, funny, interesting videos on my channel for people in the West to see, or whether it be speaking at public events, you know, in, in, in the political arena, you know, we're going to do whatever we can. 
Uh, my wife has started a, a website for Westerners that want to immigrate. Mm -hmm. And so we're, we're getting a lot of people contacting us saying, hey, can we move to Russia? And so we're trying to help them do that. Um, and uh, yeah, you know, however God wants to use us um, in the twilight of our life to make the world a better place. I know it sounds cheesy, but it is absolutely from my heart the truth. Yeah, you, and you're in good position to actually make a difference because you have the platform, you have the proper background because as a YouTuber, I can say, saying on YouTube that you're American and you're somewhere, especially that's different or in a country which is portrayed, portrayed in some ways in America, will get you views, which is a good thing, especially when you use the right for good. Yeah. Yeah, and you say I a couple of words, what was that experience like in the economical forum, the St. Petersburg Economical Forum and, and Duma? What I can't imagine there was probably like, uh, so were you in the car? You know, in, in Moscow, you have these roads which are open only for VIPs, I know. <laughs> were you driven on a car, black car? <laughs> well, sadly, you know, we got the word we were going to be in Ghost Duma and I was a little bit nervous, but not that much. My wife was quite nervous. And I remember thinking, you know, if I was going to Washington, D.C. to speak to politicians, I would be super nervous because I grew up watching that world. But because Russia is so new to me, I just I'm not that nervous, you know. And then it turned out um, I, I could not they would not allow me in, I believe, because I didn't have my Russian um, citizenship yet. Mm -hmm. um, so my wife had to go and I had to stay home and do it like this. So I was on a oh. big TV screen for uh, Ghost Duma, for Russian Parliament. And she was sitting at the big table with all the, all the men. And I got to give my speech. She got to give hers. There were newspaper articles about it. Then the Wall Street Journal contacted me and wanted to do an article on me. So I did that. And... Um, as far as the other conferences, you know, we've been to many, but like the St. Petersburg Economic Forum, that was cool because, well, the one in Voronezh, you know, they, they because we were speakers, mm -hmm. they treated us to the hotel room. They treated us to free food, like gourmet food, like all the time we were there. And I'm just yeah. like, hey, I'm just a nobody here, you know, but they, but they want to hear me speak because I'm an American and because I... I just started a YouTube channel and for whatever reason it took off, you know, yeah. people want to hear my opinion. And, and so it's just, it's just kind of a fish out of water story, you know, being treated very nice. Like I'm somebody and my badge says expert on it. Um, and, uh, for the St. Petersburg economic forum, um, similar situation and the expo room with all these companies, with all this new technology, it's just, it was just amazing to walk through and see it. And I, and I filmed some of it as well. And it's cool to have the, the little badge and you have to scan your, your badge that you wear on your neck and then your face comes up on the, on the TV screen as you're going through the turnstile. It's just very futuristic yeah. um, experience. You know? and, and then on top of that, I can't speak Russian yet, so I have when I speak, I'm doing it in English, and I have to listen to the interpreter as well. Yeah, yeah, I, have to, yeah. I have to speak slow um, because if I speak too fast, the interpreter will leave out what I've said, and I want my point to come across, especially the point where I say, "We have a YouTube channel. It's called Expat American." And you saw all of them like, "I subscribe to your channel." <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> If I speak too fast, they'll just say he has a YouTube channel. No, no, no. You got to say the name. <laughs> uh, was your, what was your main topic? What was your main theme? Is it just your experiences or was there a, if you can reveal, what was your topic? Yeah, no, like, I can. Uh, I mean, it, you can look it up. I mean, it, it's all out there online. But um, it, mostly it's immigration. Yeah. Um, you know, Russia is wondering if they should make changes to their immigration laws. Um, and they were making, it, by the way, because I was watch, following, yeah. it, especially for people like me having the Russian background or uh, is it expats? Am I expat in Finland? I guess. I don't know. But for I those believe, like... Technically, also, if you go to a new country for work, you are an expat of your previous country. All right. Not technically then not. But anyway, people with Russian roots and uh, not having Russian citizens, citizenship and that type of stuff, especially during all that pandemic, 
when it was really hard to go to to Russia, I had to be impossible. Then I was searching for a lot of information. But they are making some changes right now, and uh, maybe you have influenced that. They wanted to um, make it easier, right? Yes, with complete humility. Yes, I think I have influenced that. And yeah. um, basically, what's going on is, you know, Russia. It's hard to to live in Russia, to immigrate to Russia, because Russia wants to, I believe, protect their culture. And they see um, illegal immigration overrunning Europe and Britain and America, and they don't want that to happen here. Um, but at the same time, because of the new Cold War, and because of America abandoning traditional family values, there are a lot of people like myself that say, hey, I want to go live in Russia. And so Russia's trying to decide, do we let these people come live here? And my point is, yes, you should, uh, if you can do it carefully and let in those that really want to yeah. uh, obey the law, work hard, be productive, celebrate traditional family lifestyle, because Russia is short on people, technically. They, there's, the population is yeah. too small. And so now there's a time where the rest of the world has created where all the traditional family values people want to come live here in Russia. Thanks a lot. That's been a lot of interesting themes that we touched. So uh, really nice to yeah, meet you. Yeah, man. Really I nice think it was a great you. interview. And, and I think that your people need to, of course, as you said, come subscribe to my channel. And if you're thinking, well, but Joe's kind of, I don't know about him. I'm going to interview you on my channel so they can click over and watch that right now. And, yes. uh, and then I'll get all my people to do the same to you. So you can find the link right on the, t uh, on the video's name or in the description below. Subscribe to Expat American and uh, leave a like to the video. So share, like and comment as, the, as we all like to say in the videos. All right. I wish you best luck, and uh, we might see you in in, uh, in Moscow next. Yeah, right. man, we're we're gonna we're gonna book it. We're gonna set it up. All right, thanks a lot, man. All right, buddy. Bye bye.